Did you guys see uh, what's going on with Candace Owens? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Indy 100, Australians react to Candace Owens' call to for U.S. to invade yes. over COVID restrictions. Uh, and we also have this uh, from Time. U.S. conservatives want to save Australia from COVID tyranny. Australians aren't interested. So the media is running this claim because Candace Owens made a joke where she was like, paraphrasing, she was like, look how bad it is in Australia. I mean, when are we deploying? Obviously, I say that in jest. But, you know, you look at... And so they're like, oh, publish it. Candace Owens wants to invade Australia. This is what, this is what happens. When, when, when you have people who believe this, we're screwed, man. Well, and the other thing about it is there's tons of complaints in Australia, but they know that if they say anything, there's some very prominent personalities, other people we've talked to who've made it clear they can't talk about Australia publicly, even when yeah. they're not physically there because of what might happen to their friends or their family back home. So That's how bad it is. It, it is at that level. And I have friends and other people that I know in Australia and I ask them the question but I don't trust the answers because I do genuinely feel that they are afraid to even speak it on social media and DMs because they oh, know it can be Police show up look at people's Paulette. homes for Facebook posts uh, in uh, Australia. Look at I mean, freaking well, hell. No, I'll, I'll, I'll shout out Avi Yamini who is a yeah. Rebel News uh, journalist in Australia doing God's work is, is an understatement. Uh, it's it's over the top there. They show up to your house and they they arrest you for organizing a protest. Qu Quillette it was was considered Ugh. to be like the IDW publication when the intellectual dark web was all big and everything. And they are completely defensive of. They are pro mandate, pro lockdown, pro camp. And then uh, it was Mike Cernovich. He tweeted out one of these stories, like a video of a guy being indefinitely quarantined. And he was like, where's Quillette? You'd think a freedom, you know, publication would have a lot to write about. And then someone said something. My response was, oh, Avi Yemeni is, you know, on the ground. He, he's covering these stories. Yeah. So there Let, you go. Let's call, let's call a spade a spade here. What's happening in Australia is tyranny. It, it's over the top. It's draconian. It's, it's government literally forcing its will in the most nastiest, disgusting ways on the people when the people don't want it. There have been major protests. There have been major crackdown against protests. And I think... One of the reasons why politicians in the United States and journalists in the United States aren't really talking about it is because they really want to implement some of the same policies here in the United States. And you could see that they call for the same things, the same mandates, the same restrictions, the same lockdowns. And it's utterly insane. Now, Melbourne, just a few uh, days ago, announced that they're getting rid of their lockdowns. They had 262 days of stay at home orders of people being locked down, not being able to go outside. People were screaming outside of their balconies just a few hours ago because they lifted some of these restrictions and they allowed people to go out at night. So again, what's happening in Australia is just beyond draconian, beyond 1984. China's literally blushing at what Australia is willing to do against their own people. And for that other article to say the Australian people don't want this, how do you know? Are, are, you, are you talking to all the Australian people? Because there sure as hell has been a lot of protests, a lot of people standing up, a lot of people speaking out, even though they face the full might of a technocratic I, police state that shows up at their door because they spread wrong think on the internet. Luke, the Australians don't want this. They don't want liberation. And I know because Time Magazine says Australian lawmakers took to Twitter to school American critics of the country's COVID-19 public health measures. That proves it. Yeah. Because people, because it's, it's, it, these, these lawmakers were elected by the people. That, that means they're, they're the will of the people and the Australian people are very happy that all this is happening. What's extraordinary in the United States and in most of the Western world is how often they have not utilized the legislative process, how often this has circumvented the legislative process, circumvented the judicial process, who mostly sort of cowered rather than deal with it. You just had executive orders by unelected officials who just uh, basically put us in a real live Milgram experiment. Let's yeah. see how much we can get away with. Let's see how much people will tolerate. And unfortunately, we found out a lot of people would tolerate much more than we would like. So I, I tweeted out there was a picture of the quarantine camps. I think it was in Melbourne. And someone said quarantine camp. I put asterisk a concentration camp, and then it was some writer from Quillette or whatever. And then it, no, no, it was it was it was Claire Lehman herself. She was like, "We are not building death camps." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "Well, I didn't say death camp. I did say concentration camp, trying to allude to what these things could be." But then she ends up writing in the Spectator that you know popular American pundit Tim Pool says this, that, and otherwise. And I'm like, "Yo, if you really want to call me out, man." Like, please do so, because I would love to point out how much of a coward Claire Lehman of Quillette is and how their publication are a bunch of cowards. And I will tell you this. I will say two things. If Google ever came to me and said, show us your vaccine documentation or we're deleting your channel, I'd be like, I, I do nothing. I don't delete it or them, don't delete give it. them any ideas, Tim. The, the, but the issue is this. It's um, 
I'm going to lose my thought again, Robert. It was About the ele- Man. No, I was going to say one more thing. Go, ahead, go for, go for it. Because I said two things. The other thing is, if the United States was was in the position that Australia was in with camps and permanent lockdown, I would be saying the exact same things I am now. I don't care what the risks are. They can come, they can come to my house and they can say, you're going on indefinite quarantine and I'm not going to shut up. And you gave me time to think of what I was going to say. The, 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 the media pretends not to understand a joke when they want to demonize the person who said it. It right. was clearly a joke <laughs> and they pretend that it was a serious statement and not to bring it back Indices. to the PPC. Maxime Bernier, the leader of the PPC, at one point put out a tweet that said Maoists have invaded our government and are trying to take over. Making a joke about how it looks like, you know, we're in, imitating China, Mao's China in Canada. The Journal de Montréal or La Presse, one of the one of the media, ran with it as though he was seriously saying we're being infiltrated by communists. And the media, when it wants to lambay someone, pretends that a joke is not a joke. Well, 